Good Friday morning, everybody. It is February the 1st, 2019. I'm Apostle Todd Williams coming to you from the United States of America. We'll give just a couple of minutes for people who want to watch live to come on. And uh, I'm glad you could join me today on this wonderful Friday morning. I'm a few minutes late getting in. I uh, had some things that I was doing this morning, but I'm glad you could join me. Wherever you are in the world, I just want to say greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Today I want to talk to you about the most important person in the world. The most important person in the world. Amen. Glad you could join me this morning. Who is the most important person in the world? Well, if you saw my post, it says the Holy Spirit. You know, the most important person in the world is not your banker, uh, it's not your spouse, it's not your mother, it's not your father. It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the most important person in the world. Glad you all are joining me. Good to see you this morning, Toby. I see who else is with us this morning. Uh, good to see you, Maria. Good to see you. Everyone that's coming on, Joseph, Frederick, thank you for joining this morning. Thank you, everyone that's coming on. Lisa, good to see you this morning. Yes, we are. I will be praying for you. Yes, I, good morning, Joseph. Good to see you this morning. So I'm talking to you this morning. Hey, Toby, good to see you. I'm going to be talking to you about the most important person in the world. Uh, the Lord has been speaking to me this week, and... I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that the Holy Spirit, he won't talk about himself. Uh, Jesus said that he would talk about him. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, that he will glorify me. But I believe that it is our place to talk about the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is a very, very delicate subject for me because my great respect and honor of the Holy Spirit and who he is. He is God. Uh, so the person of who the Holy Spirit is, he's not a force. He's not the power of God. He is God. The most important person in our life must become the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Robert. Glad to see you this morning. Well, let me say this first in getting started. There is no amount of information, there is no amount of revelation that can replace the Holy Spirit. There is nothing in this world that can replace the person of the Holy Spirit. There's no other person on earth that can replace the Holy Spirit. He is the most important person in your life. You know, maybe that's something that you just need to stop wherever you are. You might be driving. You may be at your home. You may be on the other side of the world. It's daytime here. But you need to just stop and begin to talk to the Holy Spirit and tell him, you are the most important person in my life. If he's not, then you need to make him the most important person in your life. Now, let me tell you some things about the Holy Spirit. We'll look at some scriptures maybe in just a little bit, but... The Holy Spirit, he is wisdom, he is peace, he is counsel, he is advice, uh, he is love. The Holy Spirit is love. His voice is the voice of truth. Not just the voice of reason, but the voice of truth. Jesus said that when he comes, uh, that he, when the Holy Spirit comes, that he would bring truth. His voice is the voice of understanding. His voice will give you understanding. His voice is the voice of understanding. That cannot be replaced. There is there's no there's no human being, there is no person on earth that can replace the Holy Spirit. Without Listen to me real closely about this today. Thank you for all of you that are coming on. I'm Apostle Todd Williams coming to you from the United States of America. I am in Lancaster, South Carolina. One thing I want to tell you about 
the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, tells us in verse 14, he says that as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Without the leading of the Holy Spirit, all leadership is flawed. Let me say that again. Without the leading of the Holy Spirit, all leadership is flawed. Anything that you are leading, thank you for posting that, Toby. There is nothing that can replace being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, many times Christian people have used uh, the word led, and I've said it many times in times past, we've become lead poisoned. Uh, they'll say, well, I don't feel led. You know, I don't feel like God's leading me to do this. There's many things that God will not lead you to do because he's already told you to do. You know, for many years I spent uh, years and years doing evangelism, street ministry, street evangelism, and there were many times that God did not lead me to go into the streets or to go door to door or talk to people about Christ. But I found many times that God, as I went, he joined along with me because I was already doing what he told me to do. He told me to go and preach the gospel to every creature. But there are times that when the Holy Spirit will lead you, I've had God uh, wake me early in the morning or speak to me and say, I want you to go to this person's home or I want you to go to this street or I want you to go to this place or I want you to go to this town or, or so on and so forth. But I do know this, that all leadership and you need to accept this about people within the body of Christ. All leadership is flawed. There is no perfect leader. There is no perfect pastor. There is no perfect apostle. There is no perfect bishop. There is no perfect prophet or evangelist. There is not even a perfect teacher except the Holy Spirit. He is our teacher. We have to know that without his leading, it will be flawed. Hey, good morning, Malcolm. It is good to see you this morning. I love you, brother. You are a precious, precious man of God. So I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. I tell you, Malcolm has been doing a school of the Holy Spirit. And uh, man, I really wish I could get plugged into that and listen to that some more. But I will tell you this, without the leading of the Holy Spirit, all leadership is flawed. You always want to obey the Holy Spirit. You always want to obey the Holy Spirit. I was thinking about Acts chapter 5 when I'm speaking of this. You always want to obey the Holy Spirit. You know, for years I taught on the, the Holy Spirit. I taught on the person of the Holy Spirit, and he is a person. He is a person. Acts chapter 5 and verse 32 tells us that we are witnesses of these things, and he says, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. You always want to obey the Holy Spirit. You always want to obey the Holy Spirit. You never want to lie to the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 5, we find that Ananias and Sapphira, they suffered the consequences of lying to the Holy Spirit. You know, Peter's, Peter said to them, the apostle Peter, he said, you didn't lie to me, you lied to the Holy Spirit. And that lying to the Holy Spirit cost them their life. So a couple of things here that I'm pointing out to you. Good morning, Alicia and Kalik. Good to see you this morning. One is knowing that without the leading of the Holy Spirit, all leadership is flawed. Two, you always want to obey the Holy Spirit. Three, you never want to lie to the Holy Spirit. Now you may say, well, how would I, be, how would I lie to the Holy Spirit? Well, look at Acts chapter 5. Another thing that Scripture points out to us is that you would never want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, I take this, uh, Ephesians 4 and verse 30 tells us to grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. This tells me that, that I must handle my relationship, which would include my words, my character, my thoughts. 
I need to handle them very carefully when I'm dealing with the Holy Spirit. And this goes for you know, all of my life. You know, I sit and I listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, I ask him, will you speak to me? Talk to me. I want to hear your voice. I want, you know, this, even this morning I was talking to him about, I, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to have conversation with you, Holy Spirit. You know, this is, this is my daily delight is to have conversation with the Holy Spirit, to talk to him. He is a person. He is, he is here. He's on the inside of me. He's on the outside of me. He's here. The Holy Spirit is here on the earth. I talk with him. And I, more importantly, I want him to talk to me. You know, years ago, I, I read a book by uh, David Yonge Cho. Uh, he was a pr pastor in South Korea. And, uh, it was called uh, Holy Spirit or and My Senior Partner. I believe that was the, the name of that book. And that book really opened up my eyes to having a uh, conversation with the Holy Spirit. You never want to resist the Holy Spirit. Never want to resist the Holy Spirit. I'm just talking to you about the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you were with me and joining me this morning. Uh, Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. This was Stephen speaking. <clears throat> and he was speaking to the people that were about to stone him for the testimony of Jesus. He said that they were stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. And he said, you always do resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. Wow, that would be a terrible, terrible testimony of life. Good morning, George. To resist the Holy Spirit. Man, let that never be said. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, Toby. It was, it was a book by David Young H. O. Uh, I want to listen to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. He, he has the keys to all wisdom he has the keys to all understanding anything that anything that is uh, lacked anything that that you may not know you know the bible tells us in james chapter 1 verse 5 he says that if any man lacks wisdom let him ask of god well the holy spirit is god he's here with me i just need to to tune in and key into his voice stay with me i'm going to pick up my pace here just a second First, uh, First Corinthians chapter two and verse thirteen tells us, he says, "Which things we speak not in the words of men's wisdom, that men teach, but that the Holy Spirit teaches, or that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Listening to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, listening to the words of the Holy Spirit, listening to the the voice of the Holy Spirit." Yeah, that was 1 Corinthians 2.13. 1 Corinthians 2.13. Listening to his voice. You know, I'm reminded in Acts chapter 2, and I believe this is Acts chapter 13, excuse me. Acts chapter 13, I believe it's verse 2. It says that the church was gathered together at Antioch, and there were prophets and teachers there, uh, and that Paul was among them. And it says that as they were fasting and praying, that the Holy Spirit said to them to separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I've called them to do. That was Acts uh, chapter 13. It's very important that the church becomes keyed in or focused upon the voice of the Holy Spirit. If, if, we, if we walk with the Holy Spirit and we are to be, listen, if we are to walk in the Spirit, and we are to be filled with the Spirit, then you know, we're going to have to allow Him to say what He wants to say to us. And it may not always be what we're thinking. Now, I was just having a conversation with the Holy Spirit this week, and I said, well, what do you, what do you want to say to me? And He said, I want you to repair, and I'm just letting you in on what He's talking to me about. Sometimes we think that God wants to talk to us about these many super spiritual things he said I want you to get everything in your home repaired and if you can't repair it then I want you to replace it and I thought what well I see what God's saying if you're going to walk with the Holy Spirit you're going to have to walk in order 
and you have to get everything in your your home in order. There's reasons for that. And people could say, well, you know, I got this broke, my washing machine's broken or whatever. You know, when you let things build up and accumulate, they begin to consume your time, your thoughts, your energy. Uh, you know, these things can, can take you away from times when uh, you may need time to be inspired by the Holy Spirit or time to be motivated by God. Uh, you know, this is a friendship. This is really a friendship. And if you're going to, to walk with Christ, then you're going to have to develop a friendship with the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, everyone that's coming on uh, this morning. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for helping me share this. <coughs> Excuse me. You should have a conversation with the Holy Spirit daily. That is my goal every day, to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit. If this means getting up early, if this means for you staying up late, I'm an early riser. Uh, evenings don't work well for me, me mentally. Uh, so I'm usually tired and drained. Some people feel energized at night. So you're going to have to find that place that works the best for you. Uh, I find that early in the morning, before the world is moving, while it's quiet, uh, while everyone's still asleep, uh, I can have just a great conversation with the Holy Spirit. That is my daily delight. And I believe that he takes delight in that. He takes delight in the conversation that we have with him. If you will ask, there's one of my other points to you today, is if you will ask the Holy Spirit for order, uh, he will give you some things. Now listen really closely. Those that, that couldn't stay in, you're going to miss, uh, you're going to miss this. One of the main things that you need to begin to talk to the Holy Spirit about is order. Just begin to have a conversation with the Holy Spirit and ask him for order. God, I need order. I need order in my life. I need order in my mind. I need order in ministry. I need order in my family. I need order. This is a conversation that I began with the Holy Spirit and it may be that he began it with me. I just know I began talking about this. More than likely, he's the one that inspired me to talk about it because you know, we don't have enough sense to even know what we need most of the time. But having a conversation with the Holy Spirit about order, the first thing that I found that he did was that he gave me a father figure. Now, think about this. Many of you that you hear me, you see my post, you see things that I talk about. I talk a lot about spiritual fathering, of course, because I believe that this is biblical pattern. This is biblical order. You know, it's all through the Old and New Testament, uh, from Elijah and Elisha uh, to Paul, Timothy, Paul, Titus, Paul, uh, Onesimus, so forth. Um, the, when you begin to talk to the Holy Spirit about him, him establishing his order in your life, he will give you a father figure or a person in the earth that is a father to you. And it may be, you know, I'm not just talking about a natural father, but a, a spiritual father, someone who can begin to speak into your life and they can begin to speak uh, correction and they can begin to speak instruction. Now, this needs to be a person uh, that understands this, of course. Uh, but I found that instructions and corrections uh, began to follow. The Holy Spirit, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. He's the most important person in your life. Uh, he will begin to give instructions and corrections. If you begin to talk to him about order, he will begin to talk to you uh, through instructions and corrections. So many times I could, I could sit here and go through scriptures, Isaiah 38, you know, uh, he sends the prophet Isaiah to Hezekiah, tells him to set his house in order. Uh, as soon as you decide to turn uh, your life over to God ordering it, you know, the, the steps of a good man, they are ordered of the Lord. They are ordered of the Lord. You have to begin to let the Holy Spirit order your life, order your conversation. You know, you know, he talks about ordering your words aright. You, you have to turn your life over to him ordering your life. And once 
you begin to allow the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that many people, they say, well, Todd, I'm born again. I'm, you know, I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm on my way to heaven. But that doesn't mean that you are living in God's order. That does not mean that you are living in God's best. That does not mean that you are living in God's perfect will. There, Romans 12 tells us that there is a good, an acceptable, and a perfect will. I want to be walking in, in that perfect will. I want to be at the right place the right time and walking where the Holy Spirit wants me to be. Now, I know you're not too far from God that he can't speak to you and he can't, you know, set your steps straight or right. But I want you to, to look at many of the people in the New Testament. I'll take, for example, Philip in Acts chapter 8. You know, Philip, he's down at Samaria having a, I mean, just a Holy Ghost blast, you know. I mean, he's having a revival. The whole city is coming to, coming to Christ. I mean, he's down there preaching Jesus. Uh, the lame are getting healed and walking. Demons and unclean spirits are coming out of people. Uh, Peter and John come down and lay hands on the people, and they receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives him an instruction that he wants him to go southward. And, uh, and he's going to meet one man who was the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, he was willing, by the voice of the Holy Spirit, to leave you know, a great outpouring, or a rev like we would say a revival, and to go down and to speak to one man and not even know where he was going. He just knew that the Holy Spirit told him to do this. That's how attuned we might, must be to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to, to receive his order for our life and to receive his order you're going to have to receive instructions and corrections he's going to he'll give you a, li a list of things that need to be repaired and even things that need to be reparated that's some of the words that i heard from the holy spirit this week is that he wanted me to make certain reparations toward things what do i mean by that well, there are certain things that have happened in the past that you can't go back and repair, but you can make reparations towards. The Holy Spirit will give you a focus. He will give you a purpose. He will give you a dream. He will give you a destiny. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you today. And I feel the Holy Spirit at this point. Hey, good morning, Snake. Good to see you, my brother in the Lord. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Robbie. Good to see you. The most important person in our life is the Holy Spirit. The only time that I've ever found that the Holy Spirit confers with me about my past is in the instance where I need forgiveness or that there's been bitterness that was stopping my future. For the most part, I don't find the Holy Spirit talking to me about my past. He will typically talk to me about my future. I'm not saying that he will not confer with you about your past because there may be some area in your life that you need to, to forgive someone. You know, in all actuality, in the English language, there is no word uh, unforgiveness. You either forgive or you do not. There is not, there's not unforgiveness. Uh, but not forgiving can spiral into bitterness. So the Holy Spirit, he knows every secret that you don't. I want you to think about this with me for a minute. And this is the type of conversation that I have with the Holy Spirit. You know every secret that I don't know. You know every invention that is yet to be created. This is why I believe that God can prosper his people because, you know, it only takes one invention. It only takes one idea that can change the world. Uh, it only takes one invention or one idea that changes people's lives, that changes the course of the world. And the Holy Spirit knows every invention that is yet to be created. He can give you witty ideas. He can give you witty inventions. He can give you uh, things that have never even entered into the thoughts of man. He knows every idea that is even yet to be thought of. I want you to just stop for a minute and think about that. Write that down for yourself. Write yourself a note that in your conversation with the Holy Spirit, because I'm talking to you. Good morning, Hannah. Good to see you this morning. I'd like to talk with you at some point in the future. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, that he is the most important person in your life. 
He knows every secret. He knows every idea. He knows every invention that is yet to be created. He knows the future. He even Jesus said that he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. When God does this, it brings great comfort into your life. I believe that this is one of the reasons that Jesus called him the comforter is because he, he's showing you the future. I can remember years ago, i just share this with you real quick as a quick testimony of that. Uh, it was a Saturday back in 2007. That was, wow, 12 years ago. I was at the church one day just praying and uh, you know, I had my mind on some other things. Hey, good morning, Bishop Paul. Good to see you this morning. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. He's the most important person in our life. I was praying and I heard the Holy Spirit say this to me. I've prepared a place for you. I've prepared a place for you. Now I know the scripture in my mind. My mind instantly went to the the book of John, where Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. But I stopped and I said, that's not what you just said. You said, I have prepared a place for you. You just said it in past tense. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. But you just said to me, I heard your voice say to me, I have prepared. My mind immediately began to interpret this as, now I'm just being honest with you. I thought, oh my, I must be leaving the earth soon because my place in heaven is prepared. It's completed. I must be leaving soon. Uh, <laughs> I thought, well, he's finished building my place in heaven, so I, I reckon I'm getting out of here. Well, that was on a Saturday. At that time, I was, uh, I was pastoring a church and working a full-time job in another town uh, and my life was very hectic at that time, and I did that for about six years, uh, holding down a ministry and uh, a full-time job for employment. When I uh, arrived at work that Monday morning, they called an employee meeting, and they called all the employees in, and they started handing out letters. And I opened up my letter, and when I read it, they told me that I was going to be laid off from my job within the next couple of months. I looked up and, you know, I saw the countenances of everybody's face falling. And I immediately heard again, I have prepared a place for you. And I just began to laugh. Uh, my, my, you know, my coworkers didn't think this was very funny. They were like, why are you laughing? And I, I said, well, you know, God had already told me uh, that this was going to happen. I didn't realize at the time, two days earlier, what he was talking about. But God already knew. He knew that this was going to happen. You know, and it gave me great joy and great comfort. I, that fear didn't have to strike my heart. I didn't have to be worried. I didn't have to be concerned, you know. You know, I, I could hear my coworkers saying, oh, no, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to make my house payment? How am I going to pay my bills? You know, what, where am I going to go? Some of these people have been there their whole life, 20 and 30 years. You know, they had no idea what they were going to do from that point. All I knew was God said, I've prepared a place for you. Well, I can tell you this. Here I am 12 years later, and this is the place that he had prepared. I never went back uh, into the workforce. I you know, God provided. He provided. You know, we, we went full-time into ministry, and that was it, and never looked back since. God had already prepared. A, he had prepared a place for me, and that was his preparation. That was his doing. That gives you great comfort in knowing that the Holy Spirit knows the future. He holds that future. You know, he can speak to you about the future. He talks to you about the future. I'm so glad you're staying with me this morning. It's good to see you all. If I missed you uh, when you came on, I'll try to, to, if you just say hey to me or tell me where you're at in the world, uh, I'd like to just give you a thumbs up for coming in this morning. 
So, you know, one of the next things that, that I look at with this, and I'll, I'll try to wrap this up in the next few minutes, is that the Holy Spirit, uh, he knows the next step that you need to make. You know, my, my spiritual father, uh, Dr. Paul Kreitz, has, has told me this many times. He said, you just need to know the next step to make. What is the next step? You know, many times we're trying to overthink things. We're trying to, you know, run too far out ahead. You know, this is a conversation that I have with the Holy Spirit. What is the next step that I need to make? What is the next thing that I need to do? Everything, and he knows everything that you need to do that is correct. You know, I don't ever want to have to be backpedaling or going back and fixing something where if I would have just listened on the front end, you know, everything, he knows everything that you need to do something correctly, okay? He knows what thoughts that you have are a mistake. Listen to me real closely on that. The Holy Spirit knows what thoughts that you have are a mistake, this is why I said when you begin to ask God for order in your life, he will begin to establish for you uh, correction and instructions. You know, it can be something as simple as you know, you're thinking about buying a car or you know, leasing a car or whatever and, or going on this trip or going on this place, going here, going there. And he can, he can you know, so gently tell you this is a mistake. Don't do that. You know, do this, pick this one instead, or uh, you know, sometimes we can get our heart so set on something that we're not willing to listen to the Holy Spirit, and we'll later come back and find out, oh, this this was a mistake. So it's very important for me. You know, I have people asking me all the time, you know, come here, come there, you know, uh, come minister here, come minister in this place. You know, I get I get invitations daily to go in places all over the world uh, and I have to hear the Holy Spirit I have to hear the Holy Spirit I have to to know that he is confirming uh, I have to know that he is leading uh, I have to know that because I'm I didn't get into this to establish myself in anything other than a follower of Jesus that's it I'm following him I'm not I don't have my own wrapped up in this. I don't have, you know, my, my own desires are not wrapped up in this. This is about me following him and staying on that path. So the Holy Spirit, the most important person in your life, I'm going to tell you a, a vast secret here. So just come in real close and I'm going to tell you this. The Holy Spirit, he requires order. I know that just wowed you, right? That just... <laughs> He requires order. He requires order. He requires order in your home. He's going to require order in your finances. He's going to require order in your personal life. He's going to require order in your ministry. He's going to require order in your standing, in your relationships, uh, family, everything. I mean, anything, wherever there is, wherever there is disorder, there's going to be chaos and confusion. And we know that he's not the author of confusion. Uh, wherever you lack, listen to me real closely on this, wherever you lack order, you cannot prosper. Wherever you lack order, you cannot proceed. Wherever you lack order, you cannot progress. Wherever you lack order, you cannot be promoted. If I'm going to be promoted, I'm going, I want to be promoted by the Holy Spirit. And that's what I was looking at in Acts 13. Paul and Barnabas they, they received a promotion by the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit's voice that spoke to everyone that was in the church of Antioch and said, separate unto me. It doesn't say that someone prophesied this. It says that the Holy Spirit spoke. Let me tell you, if the voice of the Holy Spirit spoke in our churches today, we would be shocked at what he would say. But I'm going to tell you this. Wherever you lack order, if he's going to be the most important person in your life, then he's going to require order of you. 
And you may say, well, Todd, that just sounds too structured for me. Well, 1 Corinthians 14, 40 tells us, you know, Paul's talking to the Corinthian church about prophesying and gifts and tongues. He says, let everything be done decently and in order. What does that mean? Well, uh, it means it has to be done honorably, uh, it has to be done honestly, it has to be well formed with well speech uh, and the right behavior. You know, there has to be rank, uh, we have to understand post, and we have to understand character. Now, some people say, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute, why can't, why can't I just, you know, why can't I just, you know, feel the Holy Ghost and prophesy? Well, you know, the Holy Spirit requires order. You, you may have felt the Holy Spirit move, but that doesn't mean that he was telling you or giving you an instruction to speak something. So I'm talking to you about the Holy Spirit. He's the most important person in your life. What is order? Order is this. That there is a proper arrangement of things and relationships uh, and both your time, your schedule, and your priorities. God requires us to live in his order. If you're going to live, it's the only way that you can live in God's increase. It's the only way that you can live in God's blessing is that you have to bring your life into order. You have to bring your words into order. You know, he says uh, to order your conversation aright. You know, the steps of a good man, they're ordered of the Lord. You know, Paul said to, to Titus in chapter 1 and verse 5, he sent Titus to the island of Crete and he told him to set in order everything that was lacking. You have to begin to identify what needs to be repaired, what needs to be replaced, what needs to be reparated, what needs to be changed. You know, uh, how do I? How am I using my time? If you expect the Holy Spirit to uh, to order your time, then you need to identify how am I using my time. You know, if you expect the Holy Spirit to speak through you, uh, then then you need to examine your words, examine your tongue. You know, if you expect to, to hold the thoughts of the Holy Spirit, then uh, then you need to examine your thoughts, and you need to let Him examine your thoughts. You need to have a conversation with Him about this. You need to have, you know, God, I don't want to hold my own thoughts in this. I want to hold your thoughts. I want to hear your voice. I don't want to hear myself. Listen. This isn't about me getting on here and, and trying to just talk about things. I'm talking to you about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to you because this is the whole reason of this, is because he has a desire to develop the relationship with you further. He has the desire to develop the relationship with you further. He wants to be viewed as, the Holy Spirit wants to be viewed as the most important person in your life. Let me tell you this. When someone has VIP status in your life, you know, when someone has, uh, when they are the most important person in your life, you'll stop everything. You know, if, if, if someone is held in such honor and such esteem and with such great respect you know if the holy spirit holds that status in your life and and this is really where the church has got to return to the church has got to return to elevating the voice and the person of the holy spirit without this everywhere that the church has failed listen to me real closely everywhere that the church fails to hear the Holy Spirit, uh, it will fail. Every place that the church fails to hear the Holy Spirit, it will fail. Why? Because the church is his. It belongs to him. The church will be misled. It will hold wrong beliefs. It will hold wrong doctrines because it did not listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we'll hear something and just run off with it and take off with it. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Everything, everything, in everything, we have to give place to him. You know, one, one of the last few points that I'm going to, to pull out here is to never attach the name of the Holy Spirit to anything that he didn't ascribe. Do not put the Holy Spirit's name to anything that he didn't ascribe. I, I... I have to be very careful. I want to be very careful and walk very gingerly 
uh, when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't want to say, you know, the Holy Spirit said this or the Holy Spirit told me this. I must know and understand when God is breathing upon me. You know, the, the word of God was is, is God breathed. You know, spirit means pneuma or breath. He is the breath of God. You know, he is he is he is God's breath upon you. And you know, when Jesus told the, the disciples, he said, "Receive the Holy Spirit." He breathed on them. You know, in Acts chapter two, when they received the Holy Spirit, it says that a sound like a mighty rushing wind you know, it, it came in. It was the, the breath of God, God breathing on you. What is God breathing to you today? You know, that's that's what I wanna I wanna hear. I wanna get so close to him that I can hear him breathing. I hope you just caught that. You have to get so close. Y'all just missed a spot to hit the, the thumbs and the hearts right there because that is that is what this is all about. This is getting so close to him that you can hear him breathing, that you can hear his heart beat. You can hear what is going on in the heart and mind of God. I've had times, and I, I take times like this when I say, God, I'm not going I'm not gonna pray for anybody. I'm not going to talk to you about anybody. I'm not going to talk to you about any concerns. I'm not going to take any prayer requests. I'm just simply going to do this today. What is on your heart? What is on your mind? Who is on your mind? What are you thinking about at this moment? What is it that you would like to talk to someone in the earth about? You know, this is the greater part. Boy, I feel the Holy Spirit now in just pressing this. The greater part of prayer is when you stop talking. That is the greater part of prayer, when you stop talking. You know, I've, I've challenged people that have been under my leadership before. I said, and we've had prayer meetings. I said, I want you to just pray for every person, pray for everything that you can possibly think of. Just get it all out. Get all your concerns out. Get all your cares out. Get all your requests out. Just get it all. Get it all out. And then at the end of that, don't get up and leave. When you when you can think of every person that you can think of, you've prayed for them, you've made your request. Now, just ask God, what would he like to talk about? You just entered the prayer meeting. You just entered. You just got there. You just got to the place where you were supposed to be. Because if you walk away from a time of prayer with only uh, telling God what's on your heart, then you've missed the greater part of prayer. You've missed the greater part of the relationship. You've missed what the most important person in the world uh and in your life wanted to say. And I found that many times when I got done with all of my requests, all of the things that I said, you know, God, I'd like to have this and like to have that. He talked to me about something completely different. I'm like, didn't you just hear what I said? Well, yeah, he heard what you said, but have you heard what he said? Have you heard what was on his heart? Have you heard what he wants to talk about? And this is the greater part. I, I I don't want the Holy Spirit to have to to get my attention. You know, He's not going to scream at you. He's not going to yell at you. He's a very He is a very gentle uh, and soft spoken. You know, He has a still small voice. If you want to hear Him, you can. I think that's what the main problem with the church today is. It doesn't really want to hear the Holy Spirit. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to have a platform. Everybody wants to have a voice. Everybody wants to have a place. You know, you can have a platform and a place, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's really worthless. It's really worthless. This, this has to become the main objective of the church. We hear things through our filter. We hear things through our mind. We hear things through our doctrine. We hear things through our belief. But are you hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit? You know, I found this a long time ago. Found this a long time ago. I was in Bible college years ago, almost 20, 20, 25 years ago. I prayed for two years to go to Bible college. I finally felt like that God released me to go. This is what he told me. 
go and do what's in your heart. Well, you know, just because it's in your heart doesn't mean it's in God's heart. He gave me what I desired. But when I arrived there, I began to, to have this sense that mm, this, isn't, this isn't what I thought it was. This isn't what I, what I perceived it was going to be. So I stopped and I prayed again and I said, God, uh, why do I not feel right about this? Um, you know, I spent two years fasting and praying concerning this and now I don't feel right about it. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, I allowed you to come here so that you would not ever want to come here again. And I said, okay, thank you. But what am I supposed to do now? He told me, go home. I said, go home? And do what? He said, get in your closet. I said, okay, so you want me to leave Bible college and you want me to go home and you want me to get into my prayer closet. And I said, so, and what do you want me to do from there? He said, I want you to stay there for the next nine years. Huh? Now listen to me. If you start asking God questions, you may not like the answers that you get. My next response to the Holy Spirit was this. I said, God, I can get a doctorate in theology in eight years, and you want me to go spend nine years in a prayer closet. And he said, that's right. Now, I can argue with him. You know, I can protest. <laughs> I can refuse. I can make a choice. Uh, but I went home, and I just got in my prayer closet. I got in my prayer closet with me and my Bible. You know, if you get into the Word of God, my Bible's falling apart but I'm not. If you get into the Word of God and just simply prayed and relied on the Holy Spirit with the Word of God, you would emerge a vastly different person than having too many voices speaking into your life. I have limited, very limited, the voices that speak into my life. I, I can count them on one hand, I can tell you every minister that I listen to right now, the, the main one that I listen to is my spiritual father. Other than the Holy Spirit, he is the main voice that I listen to because I believe that God has given him a grace that no other person on the face of the earth has to speak into my life like no other person can. That, that my friend, is a vast gift and that's why I'm saying when I began to talk to the Holy Spirit about order, that the first thing that he gave me was a father. Why? Because the grace of God is upon his life to speak instructions, correction, love into my life like no one else. He can speak destiny. He can speak purpose into my life. He can say one word and the Holy Spirit, it's like activated. Bam! I mean, it happens that quick. When you recognize the order of God, you can then begin to walk in the increase of God. Well, Lord, I've been too long, but, uh, you know, just let me, let me end with this. The Holy Spirit's voice will make you happier than anything else on the earth. The Holy Spirit's voice will make you happier than anything else on the earth. I know we don't focus on happiness a lot of times, but you know, I want to be happy. I want to be joyful and happy. He knows everything about you and your future. And those secrets that he holds, they will be revealed to you in quiet. It's very important for me in my life to find quiet places and quiet spaces so that I can focus in on and zero in on the Holy Spirit. You know, putting your phone away, putting everything else in the world away, totally stopping and shutting down your world, shutting down access to your world. You know, listen, I get hundreds of messages a day of people, you know, asking me questions or whatever through my phone. There's always going to be a, the demand in the world. Even Jesus separated himself into a, a place apart. You know, he went into a mountain and prayed. You have to separate yourself from all distractions, 
from all noises, from all voices. You know, it's very difficult to, to try to focus in on the Holy Spirit and watching TV or watching, you know, even listening to me. What I'm doing here is I'm challenging you. I'm glad you're listening, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about him. I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about him. It would be the most important thing that you could do tomorrow is to wake up with the intention that you are going to make the Holy Spirit the most important person in your life. That's what gets me up every morning. That's what motivates me every morning. That's what gets me out of the bed early. That's what causes me to arise while it's still dark. That's what, you know, like David, he said, early I will seek you. you know, that, why? Because I want to hear what the Holy Spirit wants to talk about. I want to hear his voice. I, that is my fascination. That is my obsession. It is my obsession to hear what he wants to talk about, not what I want to talk to him about because most of the time we just bring our troubles and problems and whatever else to him. But he will, he, His voice will make you happy. You know, if you just talking to God about your problems, it's going to make you unhappy. It probably makes him unhappy, I'm sure. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, without the Holy Spirit, uh, your purpose is pointless. And without the Holy Spirit, your life becomes meaningless. It's the Holy Spirit that quickens. It's the Holy Spirit that brings to life even what you've forgotten, people you've forgotten, things you've forgotten, ideas you've forgotten. He can bring to life. He brings to life. He bring. listen to that. He, the Holy Spirit brings to life. He quicken. He is a quickening spirit. He brings to life. The seed that is on the inside of you, he brings it to life. You might think that it's dead. You might think that the dream is dead. You might think that the vision is dead. You may, you may feel lifeless on the inside, but it is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that quickens. It is the Holy Spirit that quickens. It is the Holy Spirit that cares. He cares. Do you realize that he cares for you more than you care for him? He cares for you. He cares. He cares. I want you to stop and think about that. As I'm, This is my last thing to you right here. If you are going to move with him, you must care. If you're going to move with the Holy Spirit, you must care. The only reason that I would come on here today and share this with you is because I care about you. And the reason that I care about you is because he cares about you. I care about you because he cares about you. And the only way that I can care about you is, is through his care. I'm going to tell you this. He is the most important person in your life. Amen. Amen. Dr. Paul Kreitz, my spiritual father, thank you for coming on. I just wanted to stop and honor you as I was, I was talking about you just a minute ago. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the most important person in your life. People pursue the voice of caring. People pursue the voice of caring. That is absolutely true. There's my beautiful wife joining us. Thank you for coming on this morning. So that's my challenge to you on this Friday, on this episode of Beyond Belief. On Beyond Belief, you have to move just beyond believing and move into a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is the most important person in your life. He is the most important person in your life. Just I just want to stop in this with prayer, and if you're able where you're at, if you're driving down the road listening, please don't close your eyes and pray, but sometimes it is good to just close your eyes so that you can just block out everything and just talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. I thank you for every person that, that came through this broadcast this morning. I thank you more importantly for your voice. I thank you that this morning, may this take us into a place beyond where we were and into a place where we elevate you, we elevate your voice, we elevate your presence, we elevate what you desire to say to us. I do believe, Holy Spirit, 
that you give grace to people in our lives that you can speak to and speak through. I thank you for those voices. I thank you for those people that you have given that grace to to speak into my life. Now, Holy Spirit, as I speak this, as I speak this in closing this, may, may, Holy Spirit, may those who have tuned into this, those that watched this morning, may they feel your presence surrounding them. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that your voice would just become clearer and that they would just begin to talk to you about what it is that you would like to bring into order into their life, bring into that place of arrangement. What is it that needs to be arranged? What is it that needs to be ordered? What is it that's been lacking? What is it that can be changed? What is it that can be uh, moved? I feel like just that the Holy Spirit is saying that that is some things that he wants to, uh, to move around in your life. There's, there are things that need to be moved. There, there's different priorities that need to be set. You've had priorities and too much focus and too much attention on things that were of lesser importance. God wants you to move those things. That's part of the changing of your mind, the changing of your thinking. We thank you that you make those things very clear and very evident to them this day, Holy Spirit. Speak to them throughout the rest of this day and may tomorrow May tomorrow our goal, may the goal of my day be to make you the most important person of my day. And I thank you for that, Holy Spirit. I thank you for the people. Glory to God. Well, he is the most important person. Apostle John Eckhart, what an absolute pleasure to know that you're on this morning. Glory to God. He is the most important person in your life. Hallelujah. I've read so many of John Eckhart's books. Well, I'm going to close out here. The Holy Spirit has things that he wants to say to you. Just give your time and attention to him and uh, build that relationship with him. Build that relationship with him. Amen. Well, I'm going to sign off from Beyond Belief and just may, may the joy of the Holy Spirit uh, may you have the joy of the Holy Spirit this weekend. May the peace of the Holy Spirit, you know, that is the kingdom of God. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. May those things just overwhelm you this week. May this weekend, may you feel the power of the Holy Spirit. May you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And may you understand the purposes of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. May his mind and his heart be unlocked to you as you seek to know the Holy Spirit beyond what you've known him before. Amen. I'm so glad you could join me. This is Apostle Todd Williams. I'm signing off, and I will see you Sunday. If you're in the area of Charlotte, North Carolina, if you're in the metro area, come join us at Beyond Church. We start here at 1030 a.m. I'm going to be bringing you a word about the secrets of success, and I'll see you. So make the Holy Spirit the most important person in your life. Bye-bye.